Uh, we're here to introduce LTI Asset Processor. Uh, so first off, who has heard of LTI? All right, all right. Pretty good crowd there. And um, the other question is who's heard of Asset Processor? All right, I didn't think so. This is a fairly new uh, standard that we're trying to get adopted into the LTI. Uh, very similar to like the Advantage Suite where it's an extension of LTI 1.3. Uh, so I think the best way to, to describe asset processor is to really to kind of explain how LTI fits in an LMS. Uh, so this is a visual representation of a context hier hierarchy within an LMS. At the bottom, you have the accounts and users, you have courses and enrollments, activities, and then submissions. Uh, so the yellow is where LTI fits into uh, LMS. And so you can attach an LTI tool at the context level. When you do that, you actually take over, uh, well, the LTI tool takes over the workflow for activities, so that'd be like an inbox tool where you have a submission uh, to an assignment within that inbox, and this is all outside of the LMS. Alternatively, you can attach an LTI tool to the activities context, and so you're actually using the uh, LMS's activity context, so like the assignments tool, you can do a deep link into um, an assignment, into an LTI tool, and then that gives the LTI tool control over the submission workflow. Uh, and in both cases, the uh, LTI tool can push grades back to the activity item at the submission level for a user. Uh, so there's a gap right there on the top right, and that is what we're trying to solve with Asset Processor. Uh, and so the idea with Asset Processor is you can attach an LTI tool to the submission layer, layer or the context within uh, an LMS, and, um, but the instructor and the students get to use the workflow all the way from the course, the activities such as an assignment tool, and the submission within Moodle, for example, and then that submission gets sent as an LTI message over to the LTI tool that we are then able to process and then provide feedback to the users, either the instructors or the students, um, with uh, data and links out to the LTI tool itself. Um, this is a generic LTI extension. This is not meant to be a plagiarism-only plugin approach. Uh, the idea is that anybody could be using this. Uh, some examples. Uh, we threw up in here, threw up throughout on this slide. Um, <laughs> so sorry about that. Uh, it's just some other examples like AI assisted grading, grammar checking, administration, uh, authorship, engagement, um, OCR. Uh, just a list, just like any other LTI tool. You know, it's just whatever the use case out there that an instructor wants to add to their tool, they can extend on their um, activities. Uh, why did we choose LTI? First off, we wanted a standard approach. Uh, this uh, LTI is a very standard um, adoption within, is, an, is a standard adoption within multiple LMSs. Uh, so Blackboard, <laughs> Canvas, Moodle, um, D2L, you know, all, all the big ones. Uh, they have all adopted it. Uh, that means that we can leverage uh, the security framework, uh, technically kind of based off of OpenID Connect uh, so that any personal identifiable information is secure. Uh, the standard also lets, lets us just kind of provide, um, well, it takes away the whole plugin management, right? So it's always kind of tough to push updates uh, as a plugin and then require the, administration, the administrators to update uh, that plugin. And then so by having it as an LTI tool, we're able to just push, uh, continuously push improvements uh, without any administration. Um, uh, what, uh, we are also able to leverage existing registrations. So most people have LTI tool registrations. This is just an extension on that existing registration. Uh, so you know you can use that same LTI tool at the context, the activity, and now at the submission uh, workflow. Uh, and it's all the same one. And since it is the same integration, all the data is consistent across all the workflows. Uh, we're also able to leverage additional LTI Advantage services listed at the bottom, so names and roles, uh, deep linking, and the assignment and grade services. All right, um, so this has been a long process. We've 
I mean, asset processor has been an idea around in the ed, ed tech community for a long time. Um, the proposal itself has been around for a couple of years. Uh, we've been working with the LTI working group and collaborating with uh, multiple platforms and kind of get the standardized uh, proposal. Right now we are in proposal state, but we expect by November to make this a candidate final. Uh, and I guess part of that proposal uh, to do the, the functionality and the features that we wanted uh, to have an asset processor, we've included, we basically, we've extended LTI to include additional services. So we have four new services, uh, a new notice and two message types um, listed there below. Uh, basically in conjunction together, they all kind of give us the ability to process an asset as an LTI tool. All right, and here's Stephanie. Thank you. So who is going to have Asset Processor? Um, or who will have it. Blackboard launched Asset Processor in April 2024, and their assignments type workflow, Turnitin actually processes the submission and surfaces and a similarity or originality report uh, and an AR, uh, AI uh, report for evaluation by instructors or students. D2L is actively developing this now for assignments. Canvas, is this is currently on their roadmap for 2025. For both of them are gonna be doing it first for their assignments areas. But Moodle is aiming to launch Asset Processor in Moodle 5.0 in the assignment type workflow. And they're gonna surface there at this point, at least initially, the similarity report and or AI report for instructors and students for submissions. And Brett is gonna show you how it's gonna look. Awesome. Let me get the right clicker, there we go. So it's been a good collaboration between Turnitin, Catalyst, and us. Um, if anyone's interested in actually looking at the trackers that we're actually working on, the QR codes will take you there, so you can actually have a look to see where the progress is going. Now, done so far, we have actually developed the um, approved UX designs alongside Moodle HQ's helped with Turnitin to actually approve to go through that design process. So our UX guys work with their UX guys to make sure it's consistent and it's gonna work across the entire system. Um, in process, we have migrating the mod LTI. So mod LTI was the activity that currently exists that you'd be familiar with is how LTI works. Now, the challenge with an activity, of course, is that it can't communicate to different parts of the system, which really limited where you could put LTIs. You had one place you could put them. For this to be able to be effective and for asset process to work, we need to move that into core, and that allows us to put placements into the gradebook, into the assignments, into, you know, into the editor, and a whole bunch of other places. Now, that's going to benefit the entire Moodle community. So this is not specific to the asset process of work, but this is work we wanted to do anyway to benefit the entire, entire Moodle community. Now, the really great thing about that is Turnitin has, has actually helped us do that work. Um, migrating the modules, so one of the dependencies we had is we want to be able, when people upgrade, to have their existing LTI tools migrate across to the new core and there's no work for them to do. So it's actually really important that when this is released that everything just continues to work that they already have installed. Um, and implementing the asset processor API extension. So that's gonna be one of the last pieces of work we need to do after the core migration is complete. So next we've got the registration admin flow after that. Um, there's gonna be some work that needs to be done around that to actually help determine where it will appear in the, in the UI. The instructor and student experience in the assignments. So once, once the, <coughs> excuse me, once the registration flow is done, we then need to implement the uh, experience for the students and, and I'll show you how that looks in a second. And then creating the migration pathway. So as I spoke before, we, want, we need to do the technical work and then we need to do the front end work for that. So this is um, what the asset processor will look like in a, an assignment page. So it might be a little bit hard to see there, so I've actually pulled that out. So as they go to, uh, to configure their assignment, there will be, uh, they want to um, enable a submission analysis, and then the external processor, you can select one. So you notice here, Turnitin is the one that's there, but you'll be able to have multiple asset processors attached in your system, and you might say, okay, well, this assignment I want, this is, this is uh, something I need to have a plagiarism report on or a similarity report. It might be a different type of assignment and some students are submitting video. I actually wanna send that away and get that translated or closed captioned. So this is, as um, was said earlier, this is much more broadly applicable than just plagiarism. This is actually applicable to any sort of file processing you'd wanna do. 
move a little bit quicker because um, we're running out of time. So again, this is the once the um, just pull that up so it's a little easier to see. So once you click on the and select your processor, this is actually an LTI launch into Turnitin's configuration. So that actually is external. So again, the tool can actually then allow you to configure the tool itself. And once we look at the grader, now these are the older grader designs because we did this design before we started the assignment work. But you can see here for each asset that has been attached to this assignment, we've got several files here. And, it's, and you can see there, there's a similarity reports being returned by Turnitin. Those are LTI, LTI placements. Again, very hard to see here, but if you look in the middle, there's a little tiny drop down. And when you click on that, you'll see the similarity report. So that will look like, so in the, in the case of Turnitin, they're returning a similarity score, an ID, which we're gonna be able to copy out, and then a link, which is a deep link that goes off to Turnitin system. Now that might be a, again, it might be a translation, so they'll slight, show slightly different information if it was a translation tool, or it might be a video processing tool or something else. These are just, this is an example that we're showing here in the greater report. Um, is that my slide or your slide? That's, That's your mine. slide. <laughs> Don't hand over. That's okay. So what will asset processor replace in Moodle? You might be asking for us. Uh, this integration option will allow Turnitin to replace its plagiarism plugins uh, within Moodle. So that would be the plagiarism plugin and the integrity plugin. I know you guys are excited, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, anyway. Uh, currently, there are no end of life dates for these plugins yet. Um, but as work progresses on this, we will be announcing end of support and end of life dates. Don't worry, it's not going to be imminent. It's just you know, as we go through there and add more features. Speaking of features, I would like to ask you what the next steps in asset processor should be. If you are willing to come talk to us and let us know, give us your feedback, give us your input, where would you like to see asset processor next? Do you want to see it in forums? Do you want to see it in workshops? Do you want to see it in quizzes? What features would you like to have in Asset Processor? Okay, so we got an originality report, maybe a similarity report. What else do we want to put in these things? And will you be like willing to collaborate us on the ideas that you have? And if you do, please come find us, Brian, hi, Brett, Brian, me, at this meeting. Uh, and if not, if you don't have a chance to, maybe you're too busy doing other things, please email us at partnersupport at turnitin.com and we will be glad to talk to you about the future of Asset Processor. But I couldn't let y'all go without letting you know a quick slide for resources for Moodle updates and migrations. Um, the first QR code tells you the Turnitin plugin updates. You may have known that the Turnitin assignment, uh, the V2 uh, update went out in uh, last month. We have the plagiarism plugin and integrity plugin coming out next month. I know, I know. Uh, again, no end of support, end of life dates for those, but just letting you know. If you are so excited and you already have Direct V2 going on right now and you're like, oh, I really need to jump on LTI 1.3 right now, we've got you covered. There is um, uh, that second QR code will actually show you the migration pathway. The proposed end of support date for Direct V2 plugin is December 31st, 2026. The end of life date is December 31st, 2027. So hopefully that's going to give you plenty of, well, freeway, if you will, to get everything done that you need. That last one, if you are already on Turnitin's LTI 1.1, and you want to upgrade to 1.3, it's really, really simple. The proposed end of support date for LTI 1.1 for Turnitin's Feedback Studio is June 30th, 2026, and the end of life is December 31st, 2026. So please make notes of those dates. And with that, whatever questions you have, please ask.